Happy Monday, everybody. Andy and Steve from wagertalk.com. Welcome to the Road to Millions. We've got Monday night football tonight. We're going to give you two Monday night football plays. We'll go over our fate of the day, sleeper of the day, stat of the day, and then we will do bankroll reset day. We will do a sad bankroll reset day at the end. Go ahead and hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, we're on a, we're on a little bit of a slide, so we'll talk about it. We'll address it, and, uh, and when I say, I mean, I say a little bit of slide, it's not like we lost, it's not like we lost half a bankroll. It's just, it's a couple of weeks in a row where we uh, we didn't come out positive, but we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about why and uh, what we'll do uh, moving forward, but kind of the natural progression of things. So uh, let us take a look at some positive vibes from the audience. Shane, great show, guys. Thank you, Shane. Rich Paul, positive vibes about today. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, Drake, glad uh, you got this one. I When I did the video on the Browns and Colts, I said I liked the over in that one. So um, uh, Lance, bet the under, 46 snap, Penn State, Ohio State. That is absolutely, uh, that was absolutely a no sweat wind. So um, I believe... Though the one-eyed fighter, yeah, the one-eyed fighter won. Um, it was a very strange fight. The other, his opponent looked pretty bad. That's that's quite a few losses in a row. I will say this: the one-eyed fighter did not look good. Um, he he got taken down a couple times, way too easy. So the one-eyed fighter, we're going to be fading him on the next one. So uh, <laughs> so positive vibes. Appreciate you guys. Go ahead and uh, hit that like button. And uh, leave us a comment. Tell us what your favorite play is for Monday Night Football. And we're going to go over two of our best bets here, Steve. Um, you want to start first? George Kittle? Interesting. It, it, these are two interesting plays. And I like your reasoning for Kittle. There's a lot of underlying factors with this one. Yeah, he's went under in four of six games so far on the season. We have the Vikings allowing the fourth least yards to opposing tight ends. Just a little over uh, 30 a game. And I'm just looking at tonight, and I'm, no Trent Williams, so I'm thinking that Kittle is going to have to help with the blitz. The The Vikings blitz at the highest rate in the league by a huge percentage. It's like almost close to 20% higher than the next highest team. I believe Seattle is behind them, but they blitz at the highest rate. And while Kittle does thrive against the blitz, he has had some success when teams blitzed against the 49ers this season. It you know, Williams was usually there to help to help protect the quarterback in those situations. I feel like last week Kittle had a really had a down week with not much production whatsoever, and that might have been because he had to help block in that game as well. I feel like this is another spot too where it's a prime time game and everyone's on the overs, everyone's going for the players on San Francisco to go over with um, you know, no Debo and the injury to McCaffrey. So I'm looking at the under here and uh and yeah, he's he's went under in the four or six games on the year, so I don't see I don't see why he would go over tonight against a team that is so good against tight ends as well. Yeah, you can say he had a down week. He had one yard last week. Yes, that would be the definition of a down of a down week. <laughs> if you really look at it, that's been like a lot of the weeks though, you know, like that's been Yep. You know, he's had two weeks where he's 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 put up decent production as far as yardage. I think you could see him maybe get in the end zone tonight, but I don't. I, I think this is a. It's, it could seem like a low number on the surface, but I think that he falls under this number tonight. Yeah, and I like McCaffrey. Looks like he's going to play, but you're also getting a healthy Elijah Mitchell, and you're getting a you know a healthy Jordan Mason. So those are three running backs that you got to believe are going to get a lot of work. Um, and you're right. I mean, it's easier to to rush block when you're missing someone like Trent Williams. Like, so you got to believe there's going to be a lot of rushing going on there and Kittle's going to be a part of that offensive line. I'm going Alexander Madison over 11 and a half rush attempts. It's starting to get juiced, but he had 18 last week, 2.4 yards per, per carry against the bears. So I'm not expecting him to have a lot of yards, but I am expecting him to have a lot of rush attempts and they're going to have to keep the defensive line a little bit honest. You cannot let Kirk cousins stand back there and throw the ball 55 times with no Justin Jefferson. Like you just can't. He's going to get his head taken off against this 49ers line. So I think, if anything, they're just going to need Madison to run into the line to make sure that that defensive line keeps honest here a little bit. And, I, I you know, I have a, I just have this sneaky feeling. I said it when I liked the Colts and the Browns to go over. I was like, I think that Browns 49ers game took a toll on those teams. And, and sure enough, the Browns defense looked terrible. 
And I just wonder if this 49ers defense is just not quite there. Like, if they're just a little bit slow because of how much, you know, wear and tear it took on them. I mean, you got Debo out with a hairline fracture of his shoulder. That was just a brutal game. Was, you know, drizzle there. You know, kicker misses two kicks. It just feels like one of those games that took a lot out of both teams. So it wouldn't surprise me if this game is a little bit closer. And without Trent Williams, I don't know if the 49ers are going to be putting up those huge numbers. So, um if this game is even remotely close, Madison's going to keep getting some carries. And if it's like within one score, he's absolutely going to go over this total. I mean, look at the Bears last week. Get 18 carries in a game that was, you know, one score. So I don't I don't know if he'll get 18, but I just don't think they abandoned the run. He's gone over, what, three out of four weeks pretty easily. So I'll take Alexander Madison, Madison to go over uh, his rush attempts here. So. All right, fade of the day. Speaking of Mr. Kirk Cousins, Steve, you're going to fade primetime. Kirk, do you think he's going to throw an interception tonight? Yeah, we get a negative 125 odds on this, which I feel like is pretty fair considering the 49ers lead the league in interceptions with 10. We've seen Cousins throw a pick in uh, three of six games on the year, but we know everyone knows about his primetime struggles. He's 2-10 and 10 on Monday Night Football. That's his record on Monday Night Football. And in those 12 games, he's thrown an interception in eight of them. So I'm looking at, um, you know, I'm looking at the 49ers defense to get the job done here and get the pick tonight at only negative 125 odds. I think it's a pretty sweet price. All right. Kirk Cousins, we're definitely fading. Uh, I'm going with the sleeper of the day. Jordan Hicks, Minnesota Vikings linebacker. I think this number is wrong. Eight and a half tackles and assists. He's had 10 or more in four out of the last five games. 10, 10, 13. 6 and 11. He plays on 98% of the defensive snaps. He leads the team in assists. I think it's a run heavy attack from San Francisco tonight, which means that he's going to be involved in a lot of those. And you know, his assist numbers the last 3 weeks are impressive. 5, 4 and 8. So he just he has no sacks on the on the year, so it's not it's this isn't a guy that, you know, goes flying up the field in hopes that he gets one sack a game. You know, this is a guy that kind of sits back and, you know, takes care of the middle of the field. And in games that the 49ers have been up a score or two, they rush the ball 31 times or more in those games. I, I mean, if San Francisco rushes the ball 35 times, I'd love Jordan Hicks to be involved in a bunch of those. So um, especially without Trent Williams, this line may be a little bit of a liability. So maybe Purdy doesn't have as much time Thumps the ball off quite a bit. I, I just think Jordan Hicks is going to be involved in quite a few of them, and I'm really surprised this isn't nine and a half. So my sleeper of the day is to have a have a big 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 game for tackles and assists for Jordan Hicks. All right, let's go to the stat of the day. This one this one's interesting because of no Trent Williams, uh, but let's let's talk this one out. We'll, uh, read the stat of the day for us, Steve. So the 49ers are 5 and 1 ATS on the first quarter spread. The Vikings are 1 and 5 ATS on the first quarter spread and they've been shut out four times. Uh, the 49ers are favored by a half point in the first quarter tonight. Hmm. Is this is the trend our friend on this one or is Trent Williams being out is this a sputtering 49ers offense coming off of a brutal game against Cleveland? I don't know what do you think. Yeah, we, we know how they get off to the quick starts, obviously, based on this stat, and they always score – they're basically always scoring first, you know what I mean, outside of, you know, maybe one game this season. They But I, I still think they get the job done here and, and win the first quarter. Um, the, the Vikings I, – I, I like the Niners still in this game, even though they're dealing with some injuries. You know, the Vikings have their own problems as well. So I think that – I think they get the job done in this one, and they cover that first quarter spread. All right, all right. So we got the 49ers really good in the first quarter. Vikings bad. Primetime Kirk Cousins. It is at Minnesota. That that probably helps him out a little bit, but so, yeah, it's a lot of different a lot of different factors in this game, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Great stat of the day. So all right. Let us talk about uh, uh how we did last week with our units and uh it wasn't good. Uh, so we were minus 13.05 units. I did not have time this morning to do the music and the graphics and everything. So, uh, we're down, we're down uh, 13 units. So let's take a look here and figure out what is going on and why we're down. So let's take a look at this slide here. So NFL is the big one, two and five. We lost the 5% play again in 
really frustrating fashion. Um, this is three in a row that we've lost in really frustrating fashion. And Steve and I were talking about, do we need to adjust our strategy? Um, I don't know. I, like, like you go back and look at the, these, some of these losses and, you know, we had digs over his receiving and Allen overthrows him for an easy 75 yard touchdown. I mean that he was, he roasted those, those guys. They start off the broadcast, Steve, by talking about how the Bills are saying, well, we want to throw, we want to get everyone involved except Stefan Diggs. So you have like this top five wide receiver in the league and the coaching staff decides, no, no, we want to get everyone involved but him. And that was a great strategy. They lose to the Patriots. And then on like the last play, <laughs> he still has a chance on that big chunk play with like three seconds left. He, he almost catches it. We could have gone over in a million ways. And you're like, you look at every other big name wide receiver, like Tyree Kill. The coaching staff did not come out and say, we're going to try and throw to everyone except Tyree Kill. Andy Reid didn't come out and say, we're going to throw to everyone else except Travis Kelsey. Like the Eagles weren't like, we're going to throw to everyone else except A.J. Brown. So we picked the wide receiver that the team decides we're just not going to throw to him. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yesterday was pretty frustrating. He, he had so many chances to get that done. And like you said, in that second to last play of the game, he, he, he almost, he, that was a catchable pass. He should have, he should have caught it. That would have put us over right there. Obviously the one you bring up with the Allen overthrowing him, that would have put him over basically his total alone. It seemed like a low total mm -hmm. to me. And I, and I feel like, I feel like we, we just kind of danced around the raindrops in the opposite way here. We kind of, you know, took the, took the guy on the wrong day, essentially. I mean, the killer on, you brought it up earlier too. And the, the born fumble um, where, the Patriots set the, the bills up with short field late in the game where they were getting ready to give the bills the ball back with a long field ahead of them. And they were going to need a touchdown to come back in that one. So we would have had the entire field to work with and needing like, you know, 25 yards essentially out of digs. Yeah. yeah it was, it was a very frustrating loss yesterday. So NFL has been a problem the last, I mean, we start off the first four weeks like gangbusters and then we've given it back. So, um, you know, overall in the season, we're not, you know, it's not horrible, but the last three weeks have certainly been rough college football. We lose one. I'm not worried about college football. We have two losses and what six wins, seven wins. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're percentage wise. We're fine on college football. And we lost that one by the hook. Not just, not just, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but not just six and two. We, our two losses are on a two point <laughs> conversion and by the hook. Our, we could, we're a two point conversion and an extra point away from being eight and oh. And yet that was, that was a frustrating one as well because they score 24. We need 35 out of Missouri. They score 24 in the first half, settle for a field goal at the end of the half where they, they were pumping in touchdowns left. And if they, if they would have pumped that in, we just need a touchdown in the second half. Still only need 11, and they put up 10 and fall just short. So that's uh, a couple of really fr frustrating days. I know it happens to everybody, but. Yeah. Uh, NHL is going fine. Uh, two and one for plus 1.17. We're four and one on the season. I'm very happy with that. MMA. Um, I, we had a parlay. One of the fights won. You couldn't have won it easier. I think it was over in 30 seconds. The other one, our guys wins the first two rounds. All he has to do is not get knocked out. In the third round, and his opponent starts barking at him like a dog. I'm not making that up. The announcers say they've never seen anything like it. The opponent starts punching him, and our guy just froze. I mean, literally deer in headlights. Did not know what to do with another grown man barking like a dog. Our guy gets knocked out with a little bit of time left, and the announcer's like, I've never seen anything like that. It feels like that's how some of these losses are coming. Like, I just don't. I don't feel like the handicapping has been bad, which is even more frustrating because it feels like these plays should be winning, but it's not. Um, tennis went one and three for minus 1.6 units. Again, we had the number one player in the world in a parlay. He wins the first set and it gets blown out two sets in a row. That happens. The cross sport parlays. These are hitting. Uh, these have, these have been one of the bright spots the last couple times. And this week, it's going to be a light schedule. I mean, like there's no, you know, there's no golf. There's no MMA. We do have NBA starting up, but it's the first, you know, it's the first week and hockey. There's one game tonight and we've been low volume on that anyway. So I'm really going to be looking at these cross sport parlays more. And I think you're going to see a few more of these this week. 
because we keep hitting him and, you know, we hit him in formula one and Corbin's just been doing such a good job with the alt lines and football. And that's one of the things about like, like the NFL record and the formula one record, like it's not, we're not, we're not just two and five, like some, like one of them, one of these cross sport parlays involved a football, you know, piece. So I feel like our football plays are not like, like terrible, but we're going to, I, I want to keep using these alt lines because these alt lines keep hitting and you put it with some, with another alt line in another sport and they just keep working well. I'm going to definitely keep doing that with MMA. Like we have a card in two weeks. I already know what one piece is going to be, but I'm not even going to mess with the rest of the, the UFC card. It's going to go somewhere else because these have been a bright spot. Uh, soccer back on the winning ways with soccer goes two and one forming the one. We went two and one. We're up in that. And I lost uh, one golf play. So I think what we just do is dial the units back. And I got to tell you, I heard Gianni talk about this. Um, and I'm with him. I've, I've talked about it, but I haven't, I haven't said it like as bluntly as he said, he said, I hate hot streaks. He's like, I hate when you go like 15 and two because like regression is coming and that's kind of what we saw. And that's kind of what we talked about. Like we had some really, really good runs here and it's just like, you, you, you don't know how you're going to lose, but you know that regression is coming, but it's so hard to predict. Like who could have predicted some of these losses that we had? And I don't know if it's just, uh, I don't know if this is the week where we turn it around because we've had three losing weeks in a row, but before that, tons of winning weeks in a row. So since we started doing this project, we're about, we're, the amount of winning weeks that we've had compared to losing weeks is pretty good. Um, we need to pick up some pace here because we dropped uh, over the last couple of weeks. So we do need to, we need to keep up pace with our goal here, but I don't know, Steve, what do we think about, uh, what do we think about this week? I, like, is it dial units back? I don't know if, I don't know if it's necessarily the, the units. It's almost like we just got to get shake off some of this, this bad luck we've been having. Yeah. I don't necessarily think we need to, dial back the, the units too much more. I mean, we, we've just had some really tough breaks, obviously. And I just like, I just think about like that Dobbs play too. Like we, I, I just wonder if we, that the Dobbs over um, rushing that we lost a couple weeks ago. And then it's the one time he's went under that total all year. And, and, and we just, because the Bengals decide to, to, to key a linebacker on him and, ha, you know, how, like it wasn't something that was, we could have, you know, for necessarily foreseen, but like the, you look at it and he goes, he crushes it the next two weeks. So I'm starting to wonder if you, you said it earlier. And I think maybe the rinse and repeat some of these plays that, that fail us, we need to look back towards again, instead of jumping around so much, that might be, that might be something that we, that could help us moving forward, I think. Yeah. And that has been one of the keys to success. And I blame myself that maybe we've gotten away from that in, in, in NFL is like, you just take the same teams, the same players, and you just, ride them out for those streaks. And we talk about those streaks all the time. And can you go four out of five? Can you go like, you know, six out of seven? I got to, and Steve, you and I talked about it, like probably a great time to go right back to digs on Thursday night, isn't it? Seriously. And it, I thought the same thing. I almost just like throw away the matchup Throw you know, just he essentially, he goes over almost, he goes over a hundred almost every week. He basically catches one other pass and he goes over a hundred this week, he, you know, and he had a couple of chances at those. I mean, he was targeted 12 times in the game and he only caught six passes. Yeah. Here's, um, his, here's his game logs. So one Oh two 66 against the Raiders in a game that they beat the Raiders so bad that they, they, they stopped throwing then one 11, one 20, one 21, 100, and then 58 yesterday. So you look at when he's gone under, he's gone over in a 28-point win when they didn't really need to throw him the ball. Even then, he still had seven catches. And then he goes under when the coaches say, we're not going to throw to him in a loss. And I got, <laughs> and I got to think that, that that this week on a short week, that they're not going to go, you know, like we lost. So we lost now with that strategy. Let's go back to it again. And, and, and you know <laughs> what I mean? That great. Yeah, it's great to that see Kincaid. Awesome. It's great to see Kincaid catch, you know, <laughs> seven passes and have this huge day over the middle. But it didn't win them the game. And on a short week, I, I got to think. I mean, it seems like a, a great spot to go back to Diggs. Just base. I mean, throw the matchup away. I mean, I know the the Bucks have a have a good defense, but they're good against the run too. So <laughs> they're not going to be it, running against them very much. But yeah, and it is funny. I mean, mission accomplished. Kincaid seventy five yards. James Cooks forty six yards. 
Khalil Shakir, 35 yards. Latavius Murray had 20 yards. But again, yeah, he took an L to the Patriots, guys. <laughs> so in a um, matchup against a guy, in a matchup against a guy that Diggs <laughs> has just feasted on in the past, you know, yeah. and and he and he was he he could have basically if they would have went to him more often, he could have done whatever he wanted essentially. But I, 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 the game plan just mystifies me. Yeah. So if we're looking ahead at like like what we're gonna do for this week, like. Uh, Corbin has some tennis plays up. Uh, those go off today and tomorrow. So hopefully we get up a little bit. NBA starts. Uh, it, it, so we'll have plays up in NBA, but they'll be, you know, one unit, maybe 2%. We'll, we'll take it kind of easy. So I got to believe going into the weekend for this week, we may only have like four or five plays like from now, you know, and through then, because, uh, I mean, we, we, you guys know that you've been following us. We've been playing some Oilers props. Now Connor McDavid's out. <laughs> for a, a week or two, which really throws a wrench into that team. So we've got a lot of uncertainty with, with some of the plays. So the best thing is just take it easy, see if we can grab some units here or there and set ourselves up for a weekend. And even the weekend, probably not a lot of plays, just hoping for really good quality and not quantity. We'll have a team total in college football, get back on the winning ways there, and then a few plays in the NFL. And it seriously could be one of those weeks where a week from today – we're we're here and we you know we're re, we're recapping like fourteen or fifteen plays. It's like oh what a great week like eleven and four ten and five and the low volume kind of comes through and we get back on the winning way. So it'll be low volume, um, and lower units, but you don't need that many plays you know to 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 do it. And honestly, we lost two five percent plays. That's that's there's why there's why our units are bad. Even if we even if we lost one even if we split on one of them, you know, it's, it's a very, very minimal loss. So, you know, I mean, I will say this, I mean, we, 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 we knew we weren't going to stay hot forever. You know what I mean? We were riding yeah, so, so hot for so long and we knew, we knew eventually <laughs> it would happen. It, it happens to everybody, but I'm also going to say, we're not going to stay cold forever either. You know what I mean? So, so we'll, we'll, we'll turn it around. I'm confident in that. Yeah, and I mean the good thing is, I mean these losing weeks. I mean you can you can weather the storm on these. These are not like horrific weeks. Like it's it, it would be bad if we came back and like, hey guys, sorry we lost thirty nine units. Like these are ebbs and flows, just like the stock market. By the way, I, there's something going on on the back end of the website. I couldn't pull up our year to date thing, so I don't have the I don't have the units gain chart. But yeah, I mean you just see there's ups and downs. Like it doesn't it, it's not a straight line. So. I'm not too worried about it. And I'm, I'm not too concerned. It's frustrating, but I think the more frustrating part is seeing, you know, these hot runs and just being, just going, Oh God, I know regression's coming. How can we avoid it? And you, you know, you know me for a while, Steve, that's what, what I, I always keep saying. If I could just figure out how to predict when we're getting ready to go on a losing streak, that would be the, that would be the ultimate uh, solution to everything is being able to predict, predict when you're getting ready to go on a losing streak. So uh, all right, guys, so that's going to do it. Uh, Steve and I are going to be recording tonight, and hopefully we're going to release it tonight, our NBA preview. We're going to be talking a ton of team totals. We're going to be talking player props for the season, and we'll start pre previewing what the, the season's going to look like. So we'll introduce a new sport into our repertoire and uh, looking forward to a really, really solid NBA season. So go and hit, and, uh, hit that like button, guys, and leave us a comment. Tell us your best play for Monday Night Football. Good luck on everyone, and we will see everyone on the NBA preview video tomorrow on the Road to Millions. Good luck.